so welcome you all once again for this course engineering mechanics the course code for this engineering mechanics is 101011 as per sppu syllabus structure this course is very interesting those who had come from cbse and icse pattern for them it will be very easy this course is very very easy and those who had come from state board for them this course will be very interesting i will make that this subject is very interesting for you all and most of the concepts related to this engineering mechanics you have already learned in physics either in 10th or 12th so that physics is the foundation for this subject engineering mechanics so this course is having 100 marks theory paper and 25 marks term work for theory paper you have to appear for two examinations one in semester examination for 30 marks and end semester examination for 70 marks as i said during welcome address that the syllabus contents of each and every subject are divided into six units so the in semester examination is based on the first two units of each subject for 30 marks and end semester examination is based on the last four units for 70 marks now what is the passing criteria so in order to clear in order to pass this subject you need to score minimum 28 marks in end semester examination that is 40% marks out of 70 in addition in in semester and end semester out of 100 you need to score 40 marks is it clear so we will take two examples see in example 1 suppose assume that you have scored 30 marks out of 30 in in semester examination whereas in end semester examination you have scored only 27 assume then what is your total score 30 plus 27 57 marks and but what is the result it is fail because you need to score minimum 28 in end semester examination you take a second example assume that you have scored 0 out of 30 in in semester and you have scored 40 marks out of 70 in end semester examination so what is your total score 0 plus 40 it is 40 but what is the result pass so in the first example though your score is 57 marks the result is fail in the second example your score is 40 marks only but the result is pass understood so the end semester examination is very very important to clear the subject and in semester examination is very very important to score maximum marks in a given subject so all subjects are having the same criteria and this course is having total four credits so three credits for theory paper of 100 marks and one credit for practicals which includes the term work of 25 marks if you earn 40% marks if you score 40% marks either in theory paper as well as in term work you will earn three credits in theory paper and for one credit in term work 
¿Ok? Then, the text and reference books for this course. Now, you tell me, what is the difference between textbook and reference book? Simply, in textbook, you can find all the contents of your subject in one book. Means that book is written as per the syllabus contents of your subject. Whereas in a reference book, you may not find all the topics in one book. You need to refer different books for different topics. But those topics are explained in detail in reference books. Is it clear? So in the syllabus copy of SPPU, it recommends these textbooks Vector Mechanics for Engineers by F. P. Beer and E. R. Johnson by Tata McGraw Hill Publication. So this is very good textbook. In fact, it is a reference book also. All the contents of this subject you can find in this book. Second one is Engineering Mechanics by R. C. Hibbler, the Pearson Education. Whereas the recommended reference books Engineering Mechanics by S.P. Timoshenko and Eng. Engineering Mechanics by Meriam and Craig. By F.L. Singer and A.P. Borosi and R.J. Skment. I am requesting you, please attend this Engineering Mechanics class with a notebook, pen and a calculator all the time. Those three things must be available with you. Whenever I say, please note down, you have to scribble it in your notebook. Right? Don't say that I will take screenshot of this, then I will note down later on. You are supposed to write during the class only. This is because while writing, whenever you have a doubt, you can discuss. Is it clear? It's not, we are habituated till now that taking screenshots and writing uh, some other time, but you have to maintain the discipline. So out of these six books, I will recommend the first one, that is Vector Mechanics for Engineers by B. Rand Johnson. Please note down the title of the book. And no need to purchase any of these books sufficient number of copies are available in the library. No need of purchasing any book. I am warning you that you should not refer any local author books. If you follow the notes given by the teacher, it is for all subjects, I am telling you. If you follow the notes given by the teacher, that is sufficient. For more clarification or understanding, if you want to explore more beyond the content, you can get the books issued from the library. So no need of purchasing any book. Understood? As far as engineering mechanics is concerned, you simply follow the lecture and one question bank will be given to you during your practical hours. If you solve the examples from that question bank, that is more than sufficient. You can score 100 out of 100. Okay. So please note down this textbook. Next. <clears throat> what is the scope of this course? To what extent you are going to study engineering mechanics? So... As per our convenience, I have divided the contents of this engineering mechanics course into three parts, part A, B, and C. These three parts are divided further into six units. And those six units are divided into 21 chapters. 
so you need to study these 21 chapters to complete this course engineering mechanics so as i said there are three parts part a part b and part c part a deals with the overview and basic concepts simply it is the prerequisites so this part a is related to the prerequisites the concepts which you have already studied in the physics at the 10th or 12th we are going to recall all those concepts in part a whereas part b it is related to statics and part c the dynamics part of engineering mechanics now there are six units right in part b four units that is all these four units are related to the statics hello unit 1 resolution and the composition of forces unit 2 distributed forces and friction here distributed forces it deals with the centroid and center of gravity unit 3 is equilibrium unit 4 analysis of structures out of these four you are familiar with unit 1 and unit 2 resolution and composition and the centroid and center of gravity whereas in part c dynamics there are two units kinematics of particles and kinetics of particles okay we will see what is the difference between kinematics and kinetics then uh, we will talk about chapters so there are 21 chapters right in these are six units so the part a overview and uh, basic concepts i am treating that as one chapter it is uh, dedicated to the pre requisites so part b as i said there are four units in this unit 1 resolution and composition of forces we have three chapters resolution of forces force couple systems and composition of forces see here the resolution and composition these two are opposite words resolution means splitting a single force into two or more forces two or more parts without changing the effect whereas composition means combining all forces together to get a single force so resolution is splitting of force composition is combining all forces together whereas unit 2 that is distributed forces and friction we have three chapters again centroid of lines and areas moment of inertia and friction so here we are going to deal with the one dimensional and two dimensional bodies only like lines and areas lines for one dimensional and areas for two dimensional so we don't have the three dimensional bodies or in simple we are not going to find out the center of gravity center of mass or center of volume of three dimensional body we are going to locate the centroid of a line and centroid of area and then friction friction is also very familiar to you right then unit 3 that is equilibrium there are two chapters in this equilibrium of force systems in plane and space force systems remember this chapter 9 space force systems it is related to three dimensional force system except chapter 9 all chapters are related to two dimensional force systems okay then unit 4 that is analysis of structures it includes three chapters analysis of trusses analysis of frames and analysis of cables whereas part c that is dynamics it includes two units that is unit 5 and unit 6 unit 5 belongs to kinematics of particles unit 6 kinetics of particles so in unit 5 there are five chapters so the chapter 13 is related to rectilinear motion and the remaining four chapters are related to curvilinear motion 
So what is the difference between rectilinear and curvilinear motion? Motion along a straight line is nothing but a rectilinear. Motion along a curved path is curvilinear motion. Whereas unit six, that is kinetics of particles is having four chapters. Newton's second law of motion, work energy principle, impulse momentum principle, and a direct central impact. Please note the point that here, kinematics of particles, kinetics of particles, means our scope is limited to the analysis of the motion of particles only, no bodies. When I'm saying particle, the particle undergoes only translation. Am I right? If it is a body, it may undergo translation as well as rotation. Particle means it is the infinitesimally small part of the body. We are neglecting the size of the body. If a number of forces are acting on the particle, so the line of action of all those forces are passing through a common point. Am I right? Mm -hmm. Hence, there is no question of any rotation. Okay. So in dynamics, our scope is limited to the study of the motion of only particles. Next, course objectives and course outcomes. So what is the difference between the course objectives and course outcomes? Can anybody tell what is the difference between Objective and outcome. Course objectives. These are nothing but learning goals. So these are the learning goals that generally describe what you are going to do during this course. What you are going to learn during this course. Whereas the learning outcome. These are the outcomes that describe in observable, observable and measurable terms what a student is able to do as a result of completing the learning experience. Simply, course objective is nothing but the goals or aims which you have set to study during the course, whereas the course outcomes are nothing but after completion of this course, what you shall be able to do? Understood? What you are going to learn in the course objective, what you have learned during the course, that is course outcome. So here, going to learn and what you have learned, that is the outcome. And uh, course objective, here you are trying to achieve, what you are trying to achieve during the course. So here, what you have hoped to achieve after completion of the course. So I hope the difference is clear to all of you. At any time, you can please interrupt me and ask the question. Now, what are the course objectives of engineering mechanics? Here, course means subject, remember. So to develop a thorough understanding of physical and mathematical principles and their application to the world around us. To develop problem solving technique with logical thinking and to learn fundamental laws of mechanics. So these three are the course objectives. So what you are going to learn during this course, whereas course outcomes, what you are supposed to do after completion of this course, what you shall be able to do after completion of this course, what you are expected to do after completion of this course is nothing but course outcomes. So after completion of this course, you shall be able to calculate the resultant and moment of various two-dimensional systems of forces. And also, you shall be able to find the position of resultant by very Gnan's theorem. Say, after completion of this course, if somebody has given one problem, 
so to find out the resultant of this four system then you shall be able to do that if not means your outcome is not achieved right if somebody says find out where the resultant of this four system is acting then you shall be able to find out the position of that resultant so you are expected to do this after completion of this course and you shall be able to find the centroid of plane figures like lines and areas also and you shall be able to find out the moment of area moment of inertia and solve the problems on friction and you shall be able to model the problems using free body diagram so in order to analyze any problem of engineering mechanics which is re related to the real world scenario first you have to develop the mathematical model of that problem using free body diagram and once you develop the mathematical model so using mathematical equations you can find out the solution the answers and after getting the answers you shall be able to interpret those answers those results with the given phenomena right so you shall be able to model the problems using free body diagram and you shall be able to write the equations of equilibrium and also you shall be able to carry out the analysis of beams and three dimensional force systems you shall be able to analyze the structures such as cables trusses and frames and during the visit of the nba or nac committees those members may interact with you during interaction they may ask you what are the different courses which you are studying you shall be able to solve the problems based on rectilinear motion and a curvilinear motion of particles then you shall be able to apply newton's second law of motion for a rectilinear and a curvilinear motion and also you shall be able to use the concept of work energy principle impulse momentum principle to solve problems of practical significance with logical thinking very very important so whatever the problems in engineering mechanics all those problems are related to the real world scenarios so you shall be able to find out the solution for those problems either by using the newton's second law of motion or by using work energy principle or impulse momentum principle or law of conservation of momentum by using all these principles you will try to find out the solution for the given problem and after finding the solution it is your job to interpret those results with the given problem of physical significance interpretation is very very important basically there are three parts in solving the numerical problem of engineering mechanics the first part is to draw free body diagram so using the idealized concepts you will convert the given problem into a mathematical model using free body diagram the second step is writing the equations mathematical equations equations of equilibrium and the solution of those equations that is second part so the first part is very very important here the skill is required to convert the given problem into a mathematical model the second step is mechanical so once you convert develop the mathematical model the anybody can write the equations and solve those uh, mathematical equations the third part is again very very important whatever the results you are getting those results are to be interpreted with the given problem the seventh one is related to your lab work you shall be able to perform various experiments and you shall be able to analyze the results and correlate with the theoretical concepts so you may have to perform seven experiments and whatever the theory you have you are going to study during the lecture hours and those theoretical concepts 
are to be verified practically during lab hours and the eighth one is also related to your lab work so the lab work is having mainly two parts one is performing the experiments seven experiments and the second part is solving the assignments so the two assignments for each unit will be given to you from the question bank developed by our own uh, faculty so those questions are taken from various uh, reference books and uh, each unit will have two assignments and one assignment you are supposed to solve during lab hours and other assignment you have to solve at home so while solving during lab hours it is to be done individually and if you have any doubt or difficulty you should discuss with the respective teacher whereas the assignments which you are going to solve at home it is expected that you should discuss with your friends and then solve individually it is not like if somebody has solved and you have just copied are you getting my point so during lab hours teacher is going to help you at home if you face any difficulty discuss with your friends and try to solve that problem at the time of submission you will be asked to solve any problem in front of the teacher if you are not able to solve you will be given zero marks for that particular assignment is it clear so we'll move to the next slide importance of this course so this is uh, very very important because most of the students will always think that i am studying computer engineering information technology electronics and telecommunication uh, telecommunication engineering but what is the use of studying this engineering mechanic subject in what way it will help us okay for that let us start with what is the difference between the scientist and engineer anybody what is the basic difference between the scientist and engineer uh, sir scientist discovers uh, something and engineer applies it in the practical life that good. concept right right so the scientist aims to invent something whereas the engineers strive to use those inventions effectively to cater the needs of mankind so here the scientist deals with the theory part and whereas engineer deals with the application of that theory right here engineering mechanics it acts it acts as a bridge between this theory and application remember so what is the importance of engineering mechanics for a student studying engineering course remember engineering mechanics and engineering drawing or engineering graphics these two subjects are very very important for a student who is doing engineering course so he belongs to any other branch of engineering you cannot call a person who did engineering without these two subjects right engineering mechanics and engineering drawing as an engineer you cannot call him as an engineer if he has he or she has not done these two subjects because in here engineering mechanics it is used to formulate new ideas new theories discover and interpret the phenomena and develop experimental and computational tools so the engineering mechanics will help you to formulate the new ideas and engineering mechanics will also helps to expose you to the problems related to real world scenarios so engineering mechanics will connect you to the real world problems right it will expose you 
to the real world problems so as an engineer it is very very important to have a connection with the real world problems and also this subject will helps you to develop your analytical skills and logical reasoning which are very important qualities for a engineer right hence this subject is very very important for the students belong to any other branch of engineering so you should not have any doubt in your mind that why this subject is required why i need to study this subject okay then let us see what is mechanics our subject is engineering mechanics so we'll try to understand the in, what is engineering mechanics starting from mechanics let us consider a matter say solid or liquid some matter which is kept on the surface and no forces are acting on this matter no external forces are acting so is there any change in the behavior of this matter no as long no. as no forces are acting on it so there is no change in behavior right suppose a system of forces are acting on it the external forces are acting on it now the behavior of this matter is going to change in what way it is going to change the size or shape may change because of the applied forces or the position of this matter may change it may move in the direction of resultant of all those forces am i right so it may have that displacement or velocity or acceleration means when a force system is applied on a body on a matter the behavior of that matter is going to change so the study of behavior of that matter under the action of applied forces is known as mechanics so mechanics is the branch of science or engineering which deals with the study of behavior of matter under the action of applied forces is it clear if no forces are acting no change in behavior hence there is no question of any study right now what are the branches of mechanics matter is available in two different forms in the universe either in solids or in fluids fluids include liquids and gases right so the solids are further divided into two types rigid solids deformable solids so what is the basic difference between rigid solid or rigid body and deformable body rigid body is the body in which there is no change in the distance between the particles constituting that body simply if there is no deformation under the action of applied forces then that body is known as a rigid body understood when different forces are acting on the body there is no change in the size or shape there is no deformation then that body is known as rigid body but there is no body which is 100% rigid in the universe right all bodies are deformable bodies but for practical purposes if the deformation of the body is very very small as compared to the overall dimensions of the body then we can treat that body as a rigid body are you following me for example you consider this pen are you able to see are yes you able to see? yes say the length of this pen is 15 cm now i am applying force on the pen from both sides using my hands right so is there any change in the length of the pen i am applying force from both sides is there any change in the length of this pen no, no sir no 
i said there is no rigid body in the universe that means all bodies are deformable bodies the moment i say it is deformable body there has to be a change in the length of this pen am i right yes when i apply the force there is a change there is a deformation but that deformation is 0.01 mm are you getting me so the length of this pen is decreased by 0.01 mm that 0.01 mm is very very small as compared to 15 cm the overall dimension of this pen hence i can neglect that deformation saying that this pen is a rigid body are you getting my point so in engineering any body can be considered as a rigid body if the deformation of that body is very small as compared to the overall dimensions of that body means it is an idealized concept so what is the meaning of idealized concept that we will see in the next slide okay so under the action of applied forces if there is a significant change in the size and shape of the sir, body yes so i have a question so whenever we uh, define a body as rigid or deformable it is always uh, with respect to the uh, amount of force that we are applying yes the same body can, the same body can be rigid for a particular amount of force and can be deformable for another particular amount of force right yeah it is true but in the actual is mute mute my here the question is indirectly we are saying that it depends on the amount of force but it directly related to the deformation when you are saying on a particular body if a small amount of force is applied that means there is a very very small deformation right when the large amount of force is applied there is a large deformation so other way around what i am saying when a force is applied on the body if whether it is small or large if the deformation of that body is very very small we can neglect that and treat that body as a rigid body irrespective of the amount of force here i am seeing the only deformation nothing to do with the amount of force so your point is also correct but is indirectly related are you getting the point so a rigid body is the body in which there is no deformation under the action of applied forces but for practical purposes for engineering purpose any body can be considered as a rigid body if the deformation of that body is very very small and can be neglected as compared to the overall dimensions of the body okay sir right. okay sir i got it then no deformable body so when the force system is acting on the body there is a significant change considerable change in the size and shape of the body that is deformable body now the study of behavior of matter under the action of applied forces is nothing but mechanics the study of behavior of solids under the action of applied forces is nothing but solid mechanics and the study of behavior of fluids under the action of applied forces is known as fluid mechanics this fluid mechanics subject will be studied by civil mechanical electrical production chemical industrial engineering students in the second year okay whereas here the solid mechanics is further divided into that we will see in the next slide the solid mechanics is divided into engineering mechanics as the solids are divided into rigid and deformable so the study of behavior of rigid bodies under the action of applied forces is known as engineering mechanics and the study of behavior of deformable bodies under the action of applied forces is known as strength of materials we simply the solid mechanics is divided into engineering mechanics and strength of materials so let us recall that what are the branches of mechanics so mechanics is broadly divided into solid mechanics and fluid mechanics solid mechanics is further 
divided into engineering mechanics and strength of materials right so engineering mechanics deals with the rigid bodies and strength of materials deals with the deformable bodies hence the engineering mechanics is also known as rigid body mechanics which is the subject of our interest means in engineering mechanics while analyzing any problem under a system of forces we are going to neglect the deformations of the bodies right we are going to deal with only rigid body so what is the definition of engineering mechanics it is a branch of mechanics which deals with the study of behavior of rigid bodies under the action of applied forces please underline this rigid body we are going to deal with the rigid bodies only or we are going to deal with the bodies in which the deformations are neglected as they are very small as compared to the overall dimensions so engineering mechanics divided into two parts statics and dynamics so statics is the branch of engineering mechanics which deals with the study of behavior of rigid bodies when they are at rest okay whereas dynamics is the branch of engineering mechanics which deals with the study of behavior of rigid bodies when they are in motion so dynamics is further subdivided into kinematics and kinetics so what is kinematics kinematics is the branch of engineering mechanics which deals with the study of behavior of rigid bodies when they are in motion but without considering the forces causing the motion while analyzing the motion of the body we are not interested in how uh, why the body is moving we are interested in only how the body is moving are you getting my point while analyzing the motion of the body we are not interested in the cause of motion we are not interested in the forces which are responsible for the motion of the body whereas while studying the motion of the body if you consider the forces also if you analyze the forces which are causing the motion of the body then it comes under kinetics in simple words if the forces are not considered during the analysis of motion that is known as kinematics whereas if the forces are also considered while analyzing the motion of the body then it comes under kinetics understood now let us recall once again the difference between kinematics and kinetics so kinematics it deals with the behavior of bodies which are in motion without considering the forces kinetics deals with the motion by considering the forces also so in kinematics we are going to deal with the motion parameters like displacement velocity acceleration time but not force whereas in kinetics we are going to study the displacement velocity acceleration time and also the force or mass remember while analyzing the motion of the body if the mass of the body is neglected then it comes under kinematics if no external forces are acting and if you consider the mass or weight of the body it comes under kinetics because once you are considering the mass that means we are considering the for gravitational force the weight of the body it is a gravitational force it comes under kinetics so in kinematics we are interested in how the body is moving whereas in kinetics we are interested in how and why the body is moving okay then idealizations in engineering mechanics 
it is very very important so what are these idealizations while developing any mathematical model of real engineering problem it is a very difficult task it become very complex means developing mathematical model for a real engineering problem so in order to make the analysis or that mathematical model simple we are making some assumptions by making these assumptions not only we are making the analysis or that particular model very simple but also the results which you are going to get from that analysis are proved to be on safer side got it no please listen uh, i said that while analyzing if the deformation of the body is very small we are treating that body as a rigid body am i right that means that is idealized concept it is the idealization so while finding the velocity or acceleration of a particular body when a force system is acting on it without considering the deformation whatever the results you are going to get those results are found to be at par with the results from the as it is analysis means on a body force system is acting so there are deformations in that body and while analyzing the motion we are considering the deformations right we are analyzing as it is and you are getting some results whereas in other case on the same body the same force system is acting but the deformations are very small in the first case we have considered those deformations but in second case we are neglecting the deformations and we are analyzing the motion and by neglecting the deformations we are making the analysis very very simple that is one part and second part is whatever the results you are going to get from that analysis those res results are proved to be on safer side there is no much difference between the two the results of two analysis on the other hand the results obtained from this idealized analysis are found to be on safer side is it clear so here there are two advantages by making this assumption that it has a rigid body one is we are making the analysis very simple the second one is whatever the results we are getting from that analysis those results are found to be very very safe as compared to the as it is analysis and there are three idealizations in engineering mechanics that is particle rigid body and point of application of force or concentrated force so this we are going to see in the next class okay thank you sir